morning, Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode, or afternoon should I say. Now I'm back again today, right, this is going to be episode 118, because there's a, no a news story that has just dropped, and I personally think it's very, very significant. Okay, right, May the 25th, 2022, breaking news. New EU law will criminalise sanctions busting and give police agencies greater powers to seize the assets of the bloc's major international criminal gangs. The European Commission today announced major new powers which criminalise sanctions violations and also give EU police agencies greater powers to freeze the assets of the bloc's organised crime gangs. Significantly, right, and then you've got to listen to this, okay, right, because this applies to all of those being investigated with associations to the Kinahan drug super cartel, right, listen. Significantly, the new powers will also extend non-criminal convictions-based confiscation powers to seize assets from criminals in cases where it has not been possible to secure a criminal conviction. Now just take that in for a minute. If authorities deem that certain people, right, are criminals, but they have not got the evidence to secure a criminal conviction, they can still seize their assets. Now this is, could be, you know, this is a slippery slope really, because what's the definition of who's a criminal and who's not a criminal and what evidence you're going to use this, you know, I mean, it, it, it's open to abuse. But now the EU, if they believe that people are involved in criminal activity, they don't have to convict them, they don't even have to charge them. They can just seize all their assets, right, and freeze them and then say to the criminals, right, well, you prove you didn't get those from criminal organisations. I told you, right, they're turning the normal application of law 180 degrees it's not innocent till proven guilty now it's guilty till proven innocent which while it can look you know um you can make the argument that it means that they can go after criminal groups who have got lots of firewalls between them like the kinahans did in in spain in 2009 and 10 on operation shovel they had so many companies and that it was so confusing that the prosecutors didn't have a chance and the case collapsed. Now, you can make a case for that, but the thing is, right, that's open to abuse. You know, maybe someone who's politically motivated and goes against the government line, you know, people, uh, authorities can then say, well, we think you might be involved in criminality, we're going to seize your assets and you've got to prove that you didn't get them like that. So it's open to abuse, but, you know, you know me, I'm very pragmatic. I mean, we've seen... Um, the pendulum swing in the favour of criminals and now it's swinging back to the middle and now it's swinging in the favour of prosecutors. And I think, to be honest, the underlying word, the buzzword for all of this is disruption. Disruption of um, criminal enterprises. Anyway, back to the article, money two paragraphs in. Let me read that again because this is so important. Significantly, the new powers will also extend non-criminal convictions by conviction-based confiscation powers to seize assets from criminals in cases where it has not been possible to secure a criminal conviction. The measures will give police agencies across Europe. Sorry, let me stop. The, the measures will give police agencies across Europe to seize unexplained wealth linked to criminal activities where officers can satisfy a court the frozen assets derived from crime and the value of property is is substantially disproportionate to the lawful income of the owner so when they get the court right they're going to um, have the power right to use right the excuse of unexplained wealth right well but, but let's rewind before that when they police agencies, right, they seize the assets or they freeze the assets. You know, and I know I don't want to harp on all the time about Tyson Fury, but he's just a good example because of the close links that have been proved, 
Okay, with Daniel Kennehan, but and even with the evidence of Peter Fury giving the uh, the interview, the, the um, Fury family and the Kennehans, right, are family friends, business friends over twenty years and even possibly further. And then you see the evidence of of Bob Aaron paying Daniel Kennehan millions of dollars on four fights of Tyson Fury as a so called advisor, which needs to be looked into, right? Um, then you got um. Tyson Fury accepting the Hugh Block limited edition MTK watch on YouTube, right? Now, I know all these things can be justified, and in the end, it can prove to be innocent, but that in itself is enough to freeze his assets. And under this law, the EU law, and I know it doesn't affect the UK because they're not in the EU no more, right? But across Europe, in Ireland as well, okay, the bar has just been lowered. Right, to, to virtually just off the ground, right? The bar that the police agencies have got to meet, right, before they can freeze people's assets, right, is virtually been taken away. Now, unless there's checks and balances on that, right, yes, of course, that can be abused because they could freeze someone's assets who is innocent and then it takes them nine months or a year to prove they're innocent and by that time, their whole business could collapse and their whole world will just collapse and then they get their money back and then they'll probably sue but then that would be protracted. But, I mean, it's just a way, it's a new form of policing. And this goes back to um, a report that came out in Europe from the European Commission on um, an action plan for 2022. The um, good old plastic paddy, he dug it out and show it, showed it to me, and I had to read through it, right, long thing. You know, and the writing was on the wall last year, and they're implementing it now. So anyway, right, let's go back to the article. Right, the measures will give police agencies across Europe the power to seize unexplained wealth linked to criminal activities where officers can satisfy a court the frozen assets derived from crime and the value of property is, is substantially disproportionate to the lawful income of the owner. In other words, if the um, owner says that he flips burgers at McDonald's, and yet he drives around a Bugatti, he lives in a $10 million house and has got a private yacht and a private plane, they'll say, well, there's a bit of discrepancy, really. You say that you flip burgers at McDonald's for minimum wage, and yet you've got the lifestyle of a billionaire, or even a millionaire, and I'm going over the top a bit, but yeah. So now, right, um, Home, Air's, Home Affairs Commissioner, right, Eva Johansson said the legislation would allow organised crime investigators to pursue Europe's transnational crime gangs, such as the Dublin and Dubai Kinahan Organised Crime Group, who were recently sanctioned by the US government. It's a real new tool to go after these highest bosses in these multinational organised crime groups, she told reporters. There were two main parts of the proposed new directive, which has been mandated by the European Council of Governments and the European Parliament. Tackling the EU's Russia sanctions busters and criminalising their actions, taking on Europe's major international crime gangs through enhanced asset seizures. Right, hang on, what the fuck's happened here? Sorry about that, right? I think the, the article's all gone... We hope you've... Look Oh, fuck me. No, no, they're not. Oh, don't do that. Right, well, they just... Um, the articles just disappear. They want a subscription now. Well, I don't reckon that. That's no good, is it? God, blimey, right? I've got to find it again now. Cor, I'm really annoyed, right? Well, oh, no, that's it. I can pause, can't I? I can pause the thing. Right, let's pause this. And I'll be back in a minute. Well, I don't know what's happened, right? I'm very sorry about that, right? Well, that article, right, disappeared and it just said you've got to make the subscription and I didn't, I can't even find the link to it. But anyway, right, it's breaking news though, right, from the EU. They've just approved new powers, right, and they folded it into the Russia thing, right, which they've announced today, um, which makes companies dealing with um, people on the sanctions list or even Russia, right, um, severe penalties, right, they're sort of coming into line with uh, the United States against the Russian oligarchs and seizing their stuff, right, well, it's an extension of that that's going on an ongoing process, but 
um, dovetailed and running alongside that, right, these new SIP powers, right, are applied to international criminal gangs, and they gave the example of the Kinahans working out of Dubai, but supplying Europe with all the um, narcotics, billions of dollars, okay, well now, right, there's no bar, so the police can just go in, the police agencies or law enforcement can go in and say, we're freezing your assets because you met Daniel Kenahan five years ago in the pub and, and he bought you a drink. And I know that's a bit extreme, but I mean, literally, that's what it is now. And what they're going to do now, they go in, they freeze everyone's assets and go, well, you're going to cooperate with us. And if not, you're going to have a year before you can get um, close to your assets, even if you can prove it. And it's a new tool that they're using. So to be honest with you, we've got to look at this, right? That's, that's happening. And I told you, right? It's like we're on a... We're on the train that's leaving the station, right, where a lot of the um, usual methods for law enforcement are being torn up, and it's almost like they're throwing the gauntlet down. Whereas before, you needed evidence to get a conviction, and then you would go after the person's assets afterwards. Now, they just freeze the assets, right, and then go to court conviction and then seize, um, and then seize them, right, legally. Right, but now they just seize the assets, right? And then if a year later, if they can't even make a legal case against the person, right, the assets have been frozen for a year and, and it disrupts their business, disrupts this, that and the other. It's just a new weapon that the um, law enforcement are, are bringing in. And this will be global to fight organised crime globally. And I mean, we've seen in 2022, the largest cluster of takedowns of drug cartels, criminality and that all over the world okay and this is just part of that but as i say my concern is giving these powers to these agencies right it means it could be abused and you know personal animosity or personal disputes you know could be that you know someone who's got nothing to do with crime right they can have their assets frozen and might take a year to be able to prove them. By that time, their life would have been dismantled. So it's worth watching, right? And it's worth watching how they use these powers. Okay, initially, we'll see them used against crime gangs like the Kinahans and, and other gangs that may pop up afterwards. But you just want to be careful, right, that, that, that it doesn't spill over, right, into freedom of speech or someone who's protesting against some kind of government decision, you know, or something like that, or they're complaining about, the, say, the NHS is not being funded correctly. Well, then all of a sudden they get their assets frozen, you know, and there's a bigger picture here. But me, you know me, I'm pragmatic. I'll just go along with whatever's decided and try to adjust myself to accommodate that and have the least amount of fallout. Well, I mean, well, it don't affect me. I'm not involved in any kind of criminality, but I'm talking about in general. If the law is, or if they say you've got to wear a mask when you leave the house, well, I'll wear a mask. I might not agree to it. I might not be, um, you know, but I'm not going to uh, rock the boat. I don't, it's the last thing I want to do. So I leave the house very few times, so I don't have to worry about wearing a mask. You know, and if they say, you know, you know I, I try to follow the rules as much as possible. You know, and if there's things come up that I don't agree with and, you you know, you're meant to do something and I don't agree with that, well, then I won't do it. Of course I won't. But I keep my head down and I'm not going to go standing on a soapbox and try and say the government's wrong, this is wrong, that's wrong. Well, that ain't going to get you nowhere, is it? Apart from barred off of social media and um, ostracised and everything, right? And people can call me a coward and all that, don't stand up for my beliefs and all that. Yeah, well, well... You know, the graveyard's littered with people who stood up for their beliefs. I mean, where the fuck did it get them? To a certain extent, you can, but, you know, you have to be careful because of the certain things that you, um, say, talk about on Twitter or on social media, and then you get banned, and then six months later, the very same thing is being spoken about freely because it turned out it was true. And I'm not going to give any examples, but there are certain things that, you know, one person says this happens and someone says that um, uh, the opposite of that and they get banned for saying it. And then six months later, it comes out that it's true. Right now, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not accusing anyone left or right or anything. But and that's why, right, because it's a minefield and you just got to guide your way through it. And sometimes you just have to, if someone asks you your opinion, you go, no comment. You know, I'm not, in, I'm not, I'm not commenting on that subject. What for? 
you know, me, I've got enough to worry about or enough to think about with stolen art, the art crime world, and now all this sort of global drug supercar shows. Why do I want to get myself involved in geopolitics, left, right and centre, apart from having a little joke about it, like poaching with his um, future wife, hopefully, Alina, right, the first lady of Russia, she flies back from Switzerland, right? She's getting poaching at it with a tantric sex and next thing she's pregnant. Well, I'm discuss discussing them and the fact that I had it weeks and weeks before the mainstream media, well, it's all to do with contacts, isn't it? So anyway, right, you know, this, um, it's very important, this new directive, right? And I think that we, you know, we can see how it works and it's going to maybe be positive, but in the longer term, right, we want to be a bit careful because, as you know, governments, when they take powers, they're very reluctant to give them back. You know, and that's not pointing fingers, mate, and personalising it. It's just the policy, isn't it? It's the agenda that they're following. So that's a very interesting one, right, you know, today, right, because we get all the um, banner headlines and the celebrities and the big names, and we talk about Daniel Kinahan, the Kinahans, Tyson Fury, um, we talk about Frank, uh, Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn, Bob Arum, and all these big names and all this criminality, Targi and Raphael Imperiali, the Camorra, and we get all these different things that happen. But to be honest, sometimes, right, it's the things that seem to be mundane and benign or that you're not really interested in, right, that have the most significance. And that's why I've come back on today is because this EU new directive, the powers they've given law enforcement to seize and freeze, to freeze people's assets, right, with very little or no evidence whatsoever, okay, just got a whole lot more serious. And, you know, going forward, we're going to see, right, how they use um, these massive powers that they've been given. So anyway, Art Hostage, episode 118, the EU give law enforcement carte blanche to do exactly what they want. Art Hostage, over and out.